<clears throat> so hello. Uh, first, I would like to say thank you to Bricon Crew for being here. So thank you very much in this beautiful city in Ghent. Uh, today I will talk about HTTPS malware traffic without the decryption. Uh, I will talk about the experiments and our research, about some new features, how to detect the HTTPS malware traffic without the decryption. The name of this talk is Detecting Malware Even When It's Encrypted, Machine Learning for the HTTPS Traffic. I am František Strasák uh, from the Czech Republic. I studied the Czech Technical University of Faculty of Electric Engineering uh, on art, artificial intelligence. Uh, I graduate in June uh, the bachelor program and now I continue on the master program. Uh, what else? Uh, I'm live music. I, I play the trumpet and I play the drums and also I love beers. So in the Czech Republic we have a lot of beer, so I am so looking forward to the Belgian beer because I was able to hear they are so good. So I'm looking forward. My supervisor is of this research is Sebastian Garcia on the same faculty in the same university. Uh, he's a researcher and lecturer there. And also he is the founder and head of Stratosphere IPS. The Stratosphere IPS project is focused on detection malware and he, it tries to help to NGOs. So what the talk is about and why it should be important for us or interesting for us. So the over half of the global web traffic use the HTTPS protocol. So it's a huge amount of data and we should realize that the HTTPS protocol, protocol is today's. Some reports, for example, from the Google report says that the users, the Google users, they use the Google Chrome, for example. So they used, for the two thirds of their traffic, they use the HTTPS protocol. So it's a huge amount of traffic. But however, the malware, malware start to adapt to this trend and the HTTPS malware web traffic increases. There are so many range of the numbers. Some reports says something about 10 or 12 of percent of HTTPS malware traffic, but we can find something about 40% of HTTPS malware traffic. So we don't know exact numbers, but we know that the HTTPS, HTTPS web traffic is increases. The problem of this in increasing of the malware HTTPS traffic is that the payload data are encrypted. So the classic detection techniques is not able to use for this because most of features of these detection techniques are based on the payload. But in this case, the payload data are encrypted. So we can create the features and methods for the machine learning algorithms, but from the public information, like the public certificate, which is this certificate is public, or for example, the metadata and the traffic. One of the solution of this problem is TLS inspection. TLS inspection works like this, that in the, in the middle of the traffic, in the client and server, there is some interceptor, for example, some proxy server, which decrypts the traffic, scan for the malicious, and then decrypt again. This solution has some advantages and disadvantages. The, <laughs> the advantage of this is that you can use the classic detection methods but there, is, there are a lot of disadvantages. For example, the proxy server which you have to buy can be expensive. 
or the it can be computerly demanding demanding and the main thing is that TLS inspection does not respect the HTTPS idea and the main thing of HTTPS is the privacy. So let's try another solution. Another solution is detect without the decryption the malware HTTPS traffic. So what we need? We need to find and discover the method without the decryption. So find new features which are public and we doesn't need to we don't, we don't need to decrypt the traffic. This solution the, the, the advantage of this solution will be that we don't use the SSL inspection or TLS inspection and this advantage is that we have to we have to discover. So our goal of this research is detect the malware HTTPS traffic without the decryption, with high accuracy, and also with low positive rate and low positive, low, 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 low negative rate. So let's define what this word means. Uh, true positive is that we said that it's malware, and it is malware. The true negative is that we predicted it's a normal and it was normal. False positive is that we predicted it's a malware but it was but it is normal. False negative that is predicted normal and it was malware. The accuracy for us is all correct predicted states divided by all of them. False positive rate is all normal, so it means that uh, false positive divided by false positive plus true negative and false negative rate is false negative divided by false negative plus true positive. So let's say something about the background. Uh, HTTPS is simply HTTP protocol encrypted by TLS or SSL protocol. The HTTPS has two main goals. The first one is to verify that you talk with the correct server and it's not some another server. And second one is ensure that nobody interrupts the traffic between the client and server. So the traffic will be just for you and the server. TLS handshake uh, has let's say three parts. The first part is client and server hello. The second one is certificate exchange. And third part is key exchange. It works like this, that client send the client hello to the server with parameters of the browser, for example, with SSL or TLS version. And for example, the next uh, version of Cypher Suite. The server receive this information and make a decision which parameters will be chosen and send uh, the, the chosen parameter to client with the public, with the certificate. Client has to verify if the server, if the certificate is, is, uh, is trusted one. So now they said that it's time for the client to verify it. So we have two, two types of certificates. The first one is root certificate and the second one is intermediate certificate. The intermediate certificate has to be trusted by root certificate. For example, in this example, uh, we have a Google certificate which is trusted by Google Internet Authority and the Google Internet Authority is trusted by GeoTrust Global Certificate Authority. So the GeoTrust Global Certificate Authority is the trusted one which should be in each browser for verifying the certificate. So then the client uh, generates the asymmetric key which encrypted by the public key from the certificate and sent to the server. Only the server can decrypt this encrypted 
uh, symmetric key by his private key. After this, the, the communication is established and the HTTP the traffic is encrypted. It's important to realize and know that privacy doesn't mean the security. So what does it mean? So it means that if you access on some website and you, you, you can see there the image, the green image of HTTPS, it doesn't mean that you are secure. It just means that your communication between the client and server is encrypted. So HTTPS is just about the trusting, so nothing more. So now let's move to the, our research. First, first of all, and one of the main things is the data set, because the data set is, is related with the results. So let's say something about this. Our data set contains flow with HTTPS traffic. We focus just on the HTTPS traffic, so we don't have not HTTPS traffic, just on the HTTPS traffic. There are two labels. We have labeled the flow by the Marvel, malware or normal. The other data set is, consists of from four subs data set, and there are 164 malware captures, normal and normal together. There is an example of capturing the malware traffic. There is the virtual machine where is the where the malware is running, and we capture their traffic. So we, 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 the malware capturing works like this. So first part of our data set is CTU-14 data set, which was generated on Czech Technical University. Uh, it contains malware and normal captures. It's a public, it's important, it's important to say it's public. And it's from the empirical comparison of botnet detection method research. The second one is MCVP dataset. It's also public and contains malware and normal captures. And it's generated from the malware capture facility project, which you can find on these links. At this moment, we had almost enough malware, but we, had, we didn't have the normal captures. So we. So we had to get generate our normal data set. It was awesome three days of clicking of websites. It was a brilliant three days of my life. So uh, it, 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 it means that I accessing 1,000 top Alexa websites. And also I create the accounts on Google, Facebook, Twitter, and I interact with them. And the last one, which is not private, rest of them are public, but this is, not, this is, this is private data set, because it contains 22 normal and real people. I was, I was real as well, but I did it by accessing the website, but this is the real traffic. Uh, in our university, so th the reason why this is private is that the people did a normal work, so the data are, are not so public. But if somebody needs, so we can discuss it about it, if you need a lot uh, very near the normal data set, so we can discuss it about it, but it's not on our website. The rest of the data set are on, on these links, and you can download it. So you can use and verify it, and you can verify our results. So the, that's the reason that our data set is public. So let's say something about numbers of our data set. In the total, it's 375 gigabytes of files, of text files, of liberal. Uh, there is uh, almost 2 million of TLS flows. TLS flows, it's too similar to NetFlow, so for the imagine. And there is also 8,600 unique certificates which are used in this all data set. So now let's say something about feature and methods. 
so we have in data set we have the pickup file and we use the bro IDS. Bro IDS is open source program for network monitoring and it can also generate the log files. So from the pickup file, which contains the pick, uh, packet, it generates some log. There is a lot of log, but we use just the free, the con log, which, which describes the TCP handshake, SSL log, which describes the SSL handshake about the N or TLS, and X509 log, which describes the certificate. The connection to the con log, how I said, uh, there is a TCP, UDP, and ICP connections, and we can find out the source and destination IP address, number of inbound and outbound packets, and inbound and outbound bytes, uh, the date in Unix time of the capture, state of the connection, so it means if the connection was established or not, duration of the connection, and the second one is SSL log, which describes the SSL handshake. There is a version of TLS, then the chosen cipher suite by server, server name, certificate path, and let's more deep in this. Here, how I was able to show you, there's a certificate path in the Google, uh, Google Chrome, and uh, it's simply like this. In, in the SSL log, we have the certificate path, and the first one, the green one, is key to the X509 log, which describes, this file describes the certificate, so the, we have linked, it links to the X509 log, so it's very easy and simple. X500 line log describes the certificate. There is a serial number of certificate, common name, validity of the certificate. So it means that if you have certificate which the validity starts on 2010 and expired on 20 to, uh, 2020. So this is the two numbers which is inside the, this file. The public key signature of algorithm, issuer of the certificate, and subject alternative names. So it's a list of the domains in certificate which, which includes the certificate. The big advantage of the bro logs files is interconnection between them. So if we, if we need to find some uh, connection which is TLS, so we just, we choose one connection lock, one, one line there, which has a key. And if this connection ha is TLS, it means that we have to find in SSL lock the, some line with same key. If we find them, so it means that this connection is TLS. From these three files, from the connection lock, SSL lock and X509 lock, we generate the SSL aggregation. We just include the information about these three files. From the SSL aggregation, we create the SSL connect unit. SSL connect unit is just a group of SSL aggregation with same source IP, destination IP, destination port, and protocol. So it just contains this some amount of SSL aggregation which describes our connection independent of the time. This is a better view of this generating of our model. So the first, on the left side, we have the raw, raw data in the files, in bro files. We, from them, we, we generate the SSL aggregation and SSL aggregation with the same source IP destination, IP destination port and protocol, we create them the SSL connect unit. And the SSL connect unit contains the high level features. So it means that, for example, on the example on the duration, let's say that each SSL aggregation has a duration because the duration we are able to take from the connection lock. 
So one SSL Connect unit has free information, free value about the duration, because each SSL aggregation has one duration. So the high-level features is normally, usually it is we compute the mean standard deviation or weighted mean of this. So how I said, we have 40 high-level features, which is used for machine learning algorithms. And these high-level features are just about the SSL Connect unit. It's not about the SSL aggregation. All, all 40 high-level features, which are used for the machine learning algorithms, are computed, computed from the SSL Connect unit. The first high-level features, let's say first that I cannot describe all of them. I will describe just some of them because there is not so much time. So I, I try to choose the most interesting. The first high-level feature is number of SSL aggregation in one SSL Connect unit. It's quite stupid features, but it's, it's, it's need to put it there as well. So it's just simply amount of SSL aggregation in SSL Connect unit. So it just, it's no mean, no standard deviation, it's just a number. Next, there is a mean and standard deviation of the duration. So one SSL Connect has few SSL aggregation, each of them has duration, and from these values, from these list values, we compute the mean and standard deviation. Then the number of packets, and mean of number of, and standard deviation of the number of packets, we do it same, mean and standard deviation of these two lists. The same with the bytes. Then uh, something interesting, ratio of established and not established state. So each SSL aggregation has information if the connection was established or not. And there's a lot of, there's much more information, but we, we put it just to this, this state, established and not established. And from this, we compute the ratio of established and not, uh, not established uh, states uh, for each SSL Connect unit. Next, quite interesting feature is uh, mean and standard of deviation of second level time difference. So it means that if we have SSL aggregation and each of, have, each of them has some capture time, the timestamp, so we can compute the differences of the time. So we can see the second light difference, difference is if we zero, 0 and 15, so because the difference is computed like this. So it, it looks like that first three SSL aggregation is a little bit periodic, but the two, but the last information is not, it's not periodic, it's 50 minutes. And from this, we compute the mean and standard deviation as well. Then the quite common feature, it's a SSL or TLS version. So again, the, each SSL aggregation contains this information about the SSL TLS version. And we compute the ratio of how much SSL aggregation in SSL Connect unit is TLS or SSL. Then, uh, usually, as one SSL Connect unit, it's one connection, so there should be just one certificate, usually, but sometimes there is more certificate. So, we try, we try to find if the, how many certificate is one in one SSL Connect unit. So, this feature is just simply amount of certificate, unique certificates in SSL Connect unit. Then there is a mean and a standard deviation of validity length. So each certificate has some, how I said on the beginning, has some, when the, when the validation starts, for example, here on 2010 and ends on 2020. So it, this is the validation, time validation of the certificate. And we just, comp and this, this, this feature is just mean and standard deviation of this used certificate in one SSL Connect unit. This feature is a little bit similar, 
but we have also the capture time, the timestamp of the capturing. So we can know if the certificate during the capture was valid. So in this moment, we have the same certificate from the 2010 to 2020, and we captured this certificate in 2015. It's just an example. So this uh, feature is ratio and with the R and D, and where the D is the length of the certificate validation, and the R is, is the time from the beginning of the certificate to now. And again, we compete for the all unique certificates. No, not for unique, for all certificate, which is used because we can use some certificate after one day, and uh, yesterday the certificate was valid, but now it, can, it doesn't have to be because it can, it, it can happen that it expired today. Then this weighted mean of public keys. So for each unique certificate, we compute the weighted mean for public key. Also, we, there is a mean and standard deviation of certificate path. So it means that in this example on the Google Chrome, there's a certificate of the Google then is issued by the Google Internet Authority and he is issued by Geotrust Global Certificate Authority. So the certificate path is free. So usually it's two or three, but we compute like this, that is each, each used unique certificate. We take this value and we compute the mean and standard deviation from this. Next is mean and standard deviation of domain names in Sun DNS. This information is in certificate. So there's, um, each, each certificate has some domain list and we compute length of domains in this list. And again, the mean and standard deviation. Uh, also in each certificate, there is a common name and the common name, it should be part of the Sun DNS domain. So we just verifying if the certificate has the common name in the Sun DNS. And we compute from this the ratio. So it was just lists of some features. There is 40 together, but I showed just few of them. And in the end, we created the data model from this. So it means that each line is one SSL Connect unit, which has 40 features, and the label as well. Uh, after, when, when we create this data model, we, we normalize the data. From this model unit, we have, uh, in our data set, there is 46 thousand over 46,000 SSL connected unit and 8,000 malware of SSL connect unit. The rest of the information I have already said. So machine learning algorithm which we, which we used, I will just say shortly about this. First one is GBoost, it's extreme gradient boosting. We used uh, with log logistic regression. So we didn't have time to tune parameters on the EG boost, but we, 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 we did some experiment with this, which experiments is the best, which parameters are the best for the XG boost, but we didn't do the tuning of parameters, but we will do in the future. And then we use the random forest, which is the random forest classifier with the three. And we also try the neural network. This is a simple neural network with, with kernel with ADAM, additive moment estimation, and SVM with the RBF kernel. It's important to say that these two machine learning alg algorithms uh, has not so good results. So it, the accuracy of was about 80%. 80 per, 80, 80 so I didn't mention in the experiment, but we, did, we tried them, and I don't know why this result is so bad. It's maybe about the, about the structure of data. We don't know, we have to 
we have to um, do it more research in this. So experiment, uh, the first, the first step on in the experiment is uh, split the data set to n same subset, and each subset will have unique Marvel testing data. Uh, it's a good question why, because we can just split the data set for the testing data and normal and the training data and do it whatever we want with the training data and then just test the testing data. But we have few data, so we want to try everything what we can with this. So each sub data set has unique malware test data and some unique normal, normal data. The second step that is for each subset, we we split for the training and testing. The training is for cross validation and for the learning, and the testing is just for the final testing of the algorithm. So the cross validation works like this on the training data that we we use the tenfold cross validation. So the first is for the testing, the rest of them for the learning training. Then in the setting second step, the second one is for the testing or is the from the training and like this. And the final step is that we train our, uh, our classifier on all training data and we test on the testing data which we, which we are not used to this moment. And for, from, this, from these subsets, we compute the average from the results. So each subset gives us the results about the cross-validation and results from the uh, t testing, and we create the average from this. It's good to know uh, what, the, what, what we will be measure. So we will measure the accuracy, false positive rate, false negative rate, sensitivity, and F1 score. First, we look inside the for the learning. So we we take we took all training data and create the learning curve. Learning curve is is our two curves. The f the red one is training score. It means that it, our classifier train on all data on the, all training data and then test all training data. So it should be, on the beginning, it should be the best. And the green one is cross-validation score. It means that it's, yeah, it's cross-validation. So it means that uh, the, it, it divides the amount of, amount of training data to tenfold. And the first fold is for the testing, or rest of them for the training, and so on. This chart says us that we probably need more data because it, it's, it's, this is not overfitting, so it's good, but we need more data for better results. The random forest is a little bit worse. Uh, the, the training curve is all the time is almost one, one hundred percent, and the cross validation is try to go to near to the, them to the training score, but it's not so good. So in this, in this case, this is overfitting. So we overfit our classifiers so much on, on, our, on training data. So EGBoost is better. Experiment one. Uh, there are two subsets, and each of the subset has training and testing, how I said. For the test training, we use balanced normal and malware amount of data. So we use 50% of normal and 50% of malware for the training. And we test a little bit stupid by the balance it again. The thing is that this is, not, this is not real life. In the real life we have 1% of malware, maybe less, and the rest of the traffic is normal. So we just wanted to know what was happened. So we test in this balance it as well. So 50% 50, 50 of normal and 50% of malware. 
this is better view of this, that you can see the training, amount of training data and amount of testing data of normal and malware is almost same. The result was not so good. The cross validation accuracy from XGBoost is 91 and half percent. Testing accuracy just on this testing data is 92 percent. False positive rate is high, 7.5 percent. And false negative rate is 8.5 percent. Random forest is a little bit worse. Cross validation accuracy 90 percent. Testing accuracy on just on the fin final testing data is 90 percent. False positive rate 8.3 percent, and false negative rate 19 percent. Experiment two, experiment two was more realistic. There is eight subset for this for this iterations. Each iteration has training was balanced, let's say, 40% of malware and 60% of normal. But the testing was 3% of malware and 97% of normal, so it's more realistic. We can see in this chart that the amount of data is, is more balanced. But what is not so good in this, this, in this experiment, that the amount of data for training normal plus, plus the malware is less than the testing. We test our classifier after the training on more data than we train. Th this issue is that we don't have still enough data, so we ha but we, don't, we, didn't, we, we want to know how we, our classifier will have, which, which behavior he has in the more real life. So the result was in XGBoost 92 percent 45 for the cross validation on the training data and on the testing data the result was 94 percent. False negative, false positive rate was still high 5 percent and false negative rate 10 percent. It's too high as well. Random forest cross validation 95, 91 percent, testing accuracy 95 percent and false positive rate is lower, but false negative rate is higher, that's 14 percent. So I, I showed these two experiments. We did much more experiments, but these two were just example of what we did. So I'm not able to show all experiments because it was just changing the feature and distribution of data. But it, what is important and maybe interesting is the some feature importance which has the main decision during the detection. So the most important feature is certificate length of validity. So it means that uh, certificate validity is length of validation. So how I was able to show you two times. So in some date it starts and in some date expires the certificate. So the length of this, for example, 25 days or two years or 10 years, it's uh, one of the most important feature. The second one is inbound and outbound packets of the connections. And let's say it's, it's everything mean and standard deviation, how I, how I explain it. Then this validity of certificate during the capture. It means that it is the certificate length and in some date we capture the certificate and we, we verify if this certificate during the capture was valid. The fourth one is duration, so standard deviation and mean of duration is one of the most important features. Next, the number of domain in certificate. So it means in some DNS, the list of domains in certificate is one of the most important feature. We can know that malware has usually has more domains in certificate than the normal. So which is interesting. Now, then it's quite common SSL TLS version. So malware usually use the ver version of SSL, which is not so new, and the periodicity, which which is the time of differences, the second time of differences of this SSL aggregation in, in one SSL Connect unit. 
Then the interesting thing is that certificates used by malware in Alex, which are in Alexa 100, uh, are 50 percent of this in this is in Alexa 100, so it is so interesting. So it means that it looks that malware uh, use the websites which are so common. But the certificate used by normal are in Alexa 1000 are just 30 percent. It is interesting because yeah, one of the things is that the normal data set was captured in the Czech, 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 Czech Republic. So we, in the Czech Republic, the Czech websites, there are not so many in, in top Alexa 1000. But it doesn't matter. It's so interesting because it means that malware used more certificate in Alexa top, 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 top 1000. So this is weird. Usage of certificate by malware is almost correct. So it means that a lot of, a lot of um, certificate are normal, uh, which are used by malware. So it doesn't mean that if certificate use the use the certif if the malware use the certificate, uh, that the certificate is some broken or has some something there is something wrong. In most of cases, the certificate is normal, and has everything is right with them. So there is a question on uh, in the end, and it is: Did we achieve the goal? No. Uh, there is a lot of things to do because we didn't we don't have so high accuracy for the real usage, on the real life, because the, the accuracy is something about the 95 from, from the 90 percent to 95. The false positive rate is too high, so it means we have 70 or 10 percent of false positive rate. So it means that from 100 connection, the seventh of them is false positive. So it's it's bad, but I believe that it's possible because there is a lot of features which we didn't use, which we didn't research. There's a lot of features to, to analyze and put to the machine learning. So I believe that it's possible, but uh, in this research, there, we didn't achieve the goal um, because, accuracy, because of the accuracy and the false positive rate. And it's important to say that uh, there is a lot of possibility to do more. But for example, uh, the, we, now we, we play with just with the con lock, which describes the connection lock, the TCP handshake, uh, SSL lock, and X500 lock. And there's a lot of more uh, locks in bro IDS. For example, DNS lock, which can be interesting to include in this method because uh, compare the domain in certificate and the domains which are DNS. So I think it can be work. And another thing is that we can use another data, uh, another data structure. We cannot use, we don't have to use the IDS and we can try something more. So, so thanks for the attention and thank you very much. And if you have some question, I would, I'd like to answer.